Ant Mammy Whammy Big Swamp. March 29, 2021 by Anna Von Reitz. Text to voice synthesis provided by Vidnami. I can't remember if it was from Little Abner or some other comic strip back in the day, but firmly ensconced in my child mind is the image of Ant Mammy Whammy Big Swamp, the soothsayer of soothsayers, prognosticator of prognosticators, voodoo mistress of the night. Only a little less famous than the groundhog of Punxsutawney. She usually had a crystal ball with her. If she were here with us today, she'd look into her crystal ball to forecast the fate of the US dollar, and here's what the report would be. First of all, that US dollar isn't your US dollar. It's another US dollar used in international trade, and it's otherwise known as the petrodollar. It is an asset backed currency, and, obviously, petroleum is the asset, together with petroleum based products, backing this dollar. That US dollar is going to be taking a beating and so are all the economies dependent on it, because too many people now know the secret of free energy. Sooner or later, a large share of the market and demand for petroleum is going to adjust downward, as the percentage of the demand dedicated to generating power, all the coal and oil and gas-powered power plants, disappears. In advance of this inevitability, those dependent on petroleum are scrambling like cockroaches in a summer kitchen. There will remain a need for petroleum and petroleum-based products. The many plastics and lubricants and other petroleum-based products that make up part of the market now will continue to exist and make the transition for the oil industry, and the US dollar, a more gradual affair than an outright collapse. The market won't just disappear overnight like the market for whale oil, but even that remaining portion will be eroded by cheaper to produce renewable agricultural alternatives like hemp oil. Inexorably, the cost of production versus demand and the growth of alternative means of generating hydrocarbons, will nibble away at even this last bastion market of big oil. Ever wonder why the push for electric cars? It isn't to save us from exhaust fumes, because the fumes that don't come from our cars are offset by the increase in emissions that do come from the power plants that are producing the electricity being used as fuel for electric cars. You see the problem, and the answer, that they are trying to sell. They are trying to keep those huge electrical power generation plants running for a new reason. If people no longer need to buy electricity to run their homes and appliances, they hope they can still hook them to pay for electricity as a fuel for their cars. That's dumb as in, dumb and dumber, but, hey, we have all done even crazier things, like nuclear power and World War II, for example. Once people figure out how to capture free energy, and they already have, What's to stop them from using the same principles to power up their cars? Nothing. Also, why bother to buy electricity and pollute the air in the process of producing the electricity, when you can cut out the middleman cost and burn gasoline more efficiently and directly? It still pollutes the air either way, but it costs less to burn petrol directly than go through the extra steps of burning petrol and turning it into electricity and then transmitting the electricity, at a loss, to run the same car. Ultimately, electric cars increase pollution, because of the extra steps to produce electricity and the transmission losses when you distribute it as fuel, so, ironically, that means that you burn more fuel per car, and create more emissions per car. You are just burning the same old fossil fuels and emitting the fumes at the level of the power plants, instead. Ironically, electric cars are a net loss both environmentally and economically. This is why electric cars are not the answer and the reason that car manufacturers have stalwartly resisted the political pressure to invest in them. Electric cars are not going to take up the slack for the oil industry, and neither will public transportation projects like maglev trains. Maglevs are far more efficient than electric cars, so pound for pound don't use as much electricity and don't burn as much fuel, which is the whole point increasing use of refined petroleum products at the level of the power generation plants. Aunt Mammy Whammy sympathizes with all the tree huggers in California and Florida. Poor dears, they've been conned again. They've been dutifully paying three to five times more for electric cars, putting up with all the inconvenience of charging them, and all the dangers these cars pose when they short out in collisions, thinking that they were reducing their carbon footprint, only to learn that the end game is to artificially increase demand for petroleum products. Snookered by big oil again, but big oil will plead that after all, they are just trying to save the US dollar. Which isn't your US dollar at all. 
So let's talk about your United States dollar, which is defined as one ounce of 0.999 pure silver. According to the dollar for dollar exchange rate established by the National Emergency Banking Act in 1934, and the inflation of the debt notes, known as Federal Reserve notes issued against each such American silver dollar, the price of silver would need to exceed $65,000 per ounce to balance the accounts. And that is never going to happen, is it? We'd have to lie to ourselves about the value of a commodity on a scale never before seen in the annals of world history. And who is going to convince the man on the street that the sock full of silver dollars that his grandma gave him are now magically worth millions of dollars? Even if they are owed that much in credit? You see the problem. There's no way to translate an ounce of pure silver into over $65,000 in credit, and if you do the accounting and balance the US dollar, credit, against the Federal Reserve notes, debt, there's insufficient asset base on the books, even allowing for fractional reserve banking. So all the banks are busted and have been busted since 1930. Big oil and the territorial US dollar, petrodollar, are on the ropes. Even after the accounting ledger is balanced and the U.S. debt is balanced out by the U.S. credit, there is still no way in this world to pay back the rank-and-file Americans, much less the Aussies, Brits, Canadians, French, Germans, Japanese, Indians, Pakistanis, Turks, dot and the list goes on. This is why the bankers want to kill Americans by the busloads. They owe us too much actual money and too much credit and too much in assets all across the board. In order to pay us and all the other people worldwide who have been victimized in exactly the same way, vast amounts of slush held as off-ledger accounts and legacy trusts would have to come back on the books and that would expose the existence of these purloined assets and be a tacit admission of the crimes committed to amass them. Aunt Mammy Whammy has decided to give up her career as a soothsayer, use her crystal ball for bowling, and retire. She's between 75 and 100 years old and she's seen it all already, but for the rest of you, take heed. There are only four ways out of this, one. They kill off their creditors, again, which is most of the world population, two. They admit the crime, in which case, somebody has to be guilty and offered up as the scapegoat, three. They come up with some totally outlandish story, aliens from outer space who are great philanthropists, to explain the sudden appearance of all this wealth. 4. They pretend that they have been responsible stewards this whole time and were actually acting in our best interests, keeping our assets and growing them for us, awaiting our return to the land and soil of our respective forefathers and nations. Of the four known possibilities, we prefer option 4. People may not believe the good intentions angle of the storyline, but at least the fundamental basis of truth is on the table and nobody gets killed. The wealth does all belong to the people of this planet individually and collectively, and they should have access to it and it should be used to benefit them both individually and collectively. Acting from that firm foundation and understanding we can all go forward together, without more violence and sacrifice, without more fairy tales and lies.